Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Mathematical and Computational Thinking, Level 2, Measuring and Graphing Quantities. You can see, since there's graph paper in here, we're going to be doing some graphing in a bit. But the icon that represents this type of thinking is mathematical. We'll get to computational later, but you don't just do that by itself. It's always to better understand a phenomena. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to ga gather data, and we're going to gather that data by actually measuring the data, and then we're going to graph it. So we're going to create a graph of the data that we've collected. So the first thing you always want to do is identify what's the phenomena that we're investigating, and then what data am I going to gather? Make sure that that data that you're gathering has a quantity. But a lot of the time when you're gathering data, the data table is going to be blank. And the reason why is that that data should come from me. And what do I mean by that? This should be data that I measure. I'm actually collecting myself by looking at the objects that I'm investigating. So we're going to measure that data. And then once we've measured the data, we're going to eventually create a graph or a graphical representation of that. So after watching this video, you should be able to look at measuring volumes using things like these measuring cups or looking at conservation of mass using a scale. I'm going to start by showing you my uh, mathematical uh, measuring and graphing around these writing implements. And then you'll have a chance to do the same with these wind-up toys. And so let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to gather some data, and for me to gather that data, I'm going to have to do some measuring. To do that, you lots of times will use a tool. So I'm going to use this, which is just a ruler to measure the length, and then we're going to use an electric scale to measure the mass. And so the first thing I want to do is identify the phenomena that I'm investigating. In this case, it's just going to be these writing implements. So let me write that down. So I'm going to be measuring these writing implements. You can see I have a Sharpie, which is a permanent marker. I've got this dry erase expo, and then I have this Crayola. And so as I start to gather my data, I better set up a data table. So as I collect my data, I've, I've set up the first column to be the brand. So it's going to be the brand, for example, Expo. Next I have the length, which is going to be how long it is. You can see I put the units underneath that. So I'm going to measure in centimeters, and then the mass I'm going to measure in grams. So the next thing I want to do is I want to do some measuring. And so to do that, I have to use a tool. And so I'm going to start with, uh, let me just start with the Sharpie. So what you want to do as you're using a ruler is you want to line it up. So I'm lining it up on the left side, and then I'm reading across on the right side. And I don't know if you can see that on there, but as I line it up, it's definitely closer to 14 than it is to 13. Um, and so that last one you kind of want to approximate. So let me write down not only the brand, but let me write down the length that I measure. So I've written down the quantity. Make sure that you get quantities when we're doing measuring. And I'm measuring it at 13.8. Since I put centimeters up here at the top, that represents 13.8 centimeters. And so the next thing I want to do is use that measuring tool to measure the Crayola and the Expo. Okay, so if I were to just put these out here, you would have a hard time telling which one of these is longer. Um, and that's why you have to use a measuring tool. So I was able to be more accurate and found that the Sharpie is just slightly longer than the Expo. Measuring is something that just takes time. You have to use the tool, get used to the tool, and it just takes practice to get better at making measurements. You want to make sure that you don't include too many numbers that are really not represented in the tool itself. You couldn't guess that is, for example, 13.80000 because your tool is not that accurate. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scale. And so we're going to see how does their quantity of mass differ. And let me do that, and we'll record that in our data table as well.
Okay, so I can see now looking at it that the Sharpie is heavier than the Expo. You also saw that when I was putting them on there as the scale, the scale doesn't always read the exact same number. So I'm getting 5.08, 0.9, and so I just said that's 5.1, so I'm just kind of rounding it up. When you're gathering data and you're measuring, you want to be as accurate as you can, but you don't include accuracy that you didn't actually measure. And so now I'm going to get these tools out of the way, and so what I've done is I've created a data table. It's got data in it, but it's not a graphical representation of the data. For us to do that, now that you've measured it, we create something called a graph. A graph is just a graphical representation of the data. It's just a visual that you can see, and it's more, sh more clearly gonna show how these writing implements uh, compare. And so as I'm doing this, the first thing I would wanna do is I'm gonna put the brands across the bottom because I did that for all of these. And then for the first graph, maybe I'm just gonna look at uh, how does the length compare? Okay, so for this graph, since these are different things, Sharpie, Crayola, Expo, a bar graph would be the easiest way to do that. And the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out the scale. What's the scale on the side? Figuring out the scale is sometimes hard. In this case, it's not very hard at all. Since this is one centimeter graph paper, you can see that each of these really represent one centimeter. And so I could just kind of mark the scale as follows. So I'm showing the length on the left side. Lots of times you don't want to mark all of the points, just the, the big points so you can kind of figure out how I could count from five or how I could count from 10. And so I'm going to put length on the y-axis. I'm going to put brand on the side. And now I'm just reading my data. So the Sharpie is 13.8. So I'm going to go to 10, 11, 12, 13. And so 13.8 is going to be right at the top, pretty close. And so I'm just going to draw a line across like that and then down. And so this graph represents just the Sharpie or the length of the Sharpie. Next thing I want to do is to do the Crayola. So the Crayola's length is going to be 9.3. So I just go up to, this would be 10, so it's a little less than that. Not super great lines, but that's going to be the length of the Crayola. And then as we're looking at the Expo, which is going to be my last one, that's going to be 13.6. So it's also going to be almost near the top, but not quite as high as the Sharpie. So then I'm going to draw a line that looks like that. And so what I'm doing is just marking the length of the implement on the y-axis, and then I'm corresponding that to the right side or the bottom x-axis, which has the brands. And so you can see as you look at the data table, it doesn't pop out to your brain as to which of these are longer. And you can really see from a graph, if you didn't have the writing implements, you can see from a graph that the Sharpie and the Expo are really close and both of them are longer than the Crayola. And so that's the point of a graph. Uh, I'm almost done. My graph is almost there, but what I don't have is I don't have a title. And a really nice way to do the title is to just look at what's on the y-axis and then the x-axis. And so let me write a good title. And so I just said it's the length of each pen or each implement by brand. And so I'm just reading what's on the y-axis and then saying that's we're graphing that by the brand or organized by brand. So that's a graph. The next thing I would want to do is just create a graph of the mass. Um, and so let me take a second to clean this out and it won't take that long. Okay, now the scale on the, on the y-axis is my mass, so how heavy they are. I've got my brand on the bottom, and now I've got a nice title. So it's mass of penned by brand, organized by brand. And so you can see that even though the Sharpie and the Expo are really close in their length, the Sharpie is a lot heavier than the Expo. And me holding this in my hand, it's really hard for me to tell the difference in their mass. And that's why it's important that you have something like an electric balance so you can really get accurate data on what that is. And so I've showed you how to look at um, 
measuring and graphing with these writing implements, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and you're gonna do the same thing with some wind-up toys. Okay, for this next one, we've got these three wind-up toys, and so let me define the phenomena. Okay, for the next one, you can see what I'm gonna use for a measuring device is a timer. And so for this one, I could do it for you, but then you wouldn't be learning the practice of how to measure. And so what I thought I could do with these wind-up toys is I could keep track of one piece of data, which would be how many winds does the toy take before it's eventually full? And then how long does it keep going? How does it operate? So the two things that you should put together in your data table would be in addition to the different types of toys, robot, turtle, and dino, you should have a column for the number of winds it can take and then also the time that it will operate. So I'm gonna move my timing device off of the side. So I'll do this uh, on the video and then you'll have to fill out your data table with me and then do some graphing. So let's do this together. I'm gonna to start with the robot. Remember, you wanna be recording this. And so I'm gonna start by counting the number of winds I can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven winds. And now I'm gonna give you a start and a stop. On your marks, get set, start. Slowing down, stop. So I'm gonna record my data for the robot. Okay, now I'm going to do the turtle. So the same thing, I'm gonna count the number of winds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just nine. So let me record that as data. And then I'm gonna do the timer. Get ready for the tur turtle, it really goes. On your marks, get set, start. And stop. Now we're gonna do the dyno, which is going to be the last one. Let me do the number of winds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine is what I had for that. Now let me record the data on the time. On your marks, get set, start. Okay, so I've got my data. What I would encourage you to do is pause the video, then make a data table, and then make a graph of the data that you've collected, then unpause the video, come back, and then we'll see how our graphs compare. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set up my data table. So first thing I have are the different types of toys. So let me write that down. And then the next thing I wanna have is the two things that I measured. So I'm looking at the different types of toys, robot, turtle, and dino, and then I'm looking at the total number of wines and the time of operation. So let me write down the data that I collected. Okay, so I got seven wines for the robot, so less, and then the same nine for the turtle and the dino. And then these are the times of operation. Now, even though my watch was recording up to, I think, the 100th, I just included to the 10th because I don't think I was that accurate in my timing, getting the start and the stop exactly the same. So this is my data table. The next thing that I wanna do now that I've done all this measuring and recording is I wanna create a graph, a graph of the data. And so for me, I'm gonna do the total number of wines first and then I'll do the time of operation second.
Okay, so for my first graph, I've got type of toy along the bottom, and then I've got the total number of wines on the y-axis. One thing I'm missing is a title, so for me to write title, I just include these two things. So for the graph, I wrote the total number of wines by toy type is my graph that I have. And so you can see it's the same for the turtle and the dino. So you should get really good at going from a data table to a graph and then being able to read from a graph back to a data table. So that's the first graph. Uh, the other one is how long they went. So let me clear this up and then I'll do that. Okay, so here's the graph. I've got the time of operation by toy type. So I've got time of operation on the Y. You can see that I had to adjust my scale because I wouldn't have been able to count each of these and get all the way to 16.7. So I just adjusted the scale. And I can see here that the dino had the longest time of operation. Um, it went almost as long as the others two, well, not quite, but almost the same as the other two combined. So way longer, even though the total number of wines is similar. So there must be something in difference between the robot and uh, the turtle. And so even with a simple phenomena, you can get really complex ideas. And so now that I've shown you that, what I'd love to have you do is I'll include videos down below for a measuring cup and you could do that or even looking at conservation of mass. And so what we did to go through and review again is to gather data by measuring. So you have to do that using some kind of a measuring tool if you can't just count it. And then taking that data and moving to a graph, really important skills in science and you can only really learn them by doing them. Uh, so that's uh, level two and I hope that's helpful.